Tonight, a survivor of sex trafficking is sharing her story in hopes of raising awareness about the issue here and abroad. San Antonio's police chief says law enforcement forced to open fire when a suspect became aggressive during an arrest attempt. And the race for the Democratic nomination for president narrowing as yet another candidate drops out ahead of tomorrow's crucial debate. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. Philippine authorities are calling for a total evacuation of millions of people near the capital Manila after a volcano spewed ash up to nine miles. Some images coming in today show lava beginning to gush out of the Taal volcano, volcano and the sky above it still thick with ash and steam. Right now that volcano alert is at a four out of five, which means an explosive eruption could happen in the coming hours or days. Everyone within a 10 mile radius falls under this evacuation. This ash could potentially be carried more than 60 miles. That would contaminate the air and water supplies for more than 25 million people. Here at home tonight, a San Antonio sex trafficking survivor using her voice during National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. She held a town hall seminar tonight as part of Dream Week with a panel including experts from law enforcement and the DA's office. As Courtney Freeman reports, it's a joint community effort to show that San Antonio trafficking is a problem here and nationwide. We do want to warn you the following content might be disturbing to some people. It was 32 years ago, but Maria Perez remembers every detail. I had lost someone that I dearly loved and I was vulnerable and I was depressed. So that's when they engage with you. They meaning traffickers. At first he was the most charming person. Ah, oh, the, the charmers. Everything started to change as the controlling his abusiveness. Then one day he told her they were going to Reynosa, Mexico. She said he forced her into the trunk of a car. If you make any noise, I will kill you and your family. Once in Mexico, she said the unspeakable happened. They raped me in front of everybody. They were laughing, they were drinking. I wasn't the only person there. There was other women there. For weeks, she was kept in a tiny room, repeatedly sold for sex. When she was finally brought back to America, she escaped and out of fear for her life, kept her secret for almost three decades. A lot of people are still blind. So that's not happening here. This is America. There's no way that can happen here. Yes, it is. It's happening in our own back backyard. That pushed her to speak up and start the organization Our Empowering Women of America, or OWE, allowing women and experts to use their voices to educate and make change. We have to work together and we have to work with law enforcement. I mean, there is, they can't do everything. They need help. Tonight, she hosted a town hall seminar with members of the Bear County Sheriff's Office and DA's office on hand to offer information and take questions. Uh, awareness, prevention, you know, what to look for, the signs for, and then the, the percentages, what, what's happening out there. Perez says by continuing the conversation, trafficking can be prevented and lives can be saved. For The Nine, Courtney Friedman. To find out the red flags of human trafficking and who to call if you see them, go to KSAT.com. Super Tuesday is almost here and Texas, one of 14 states holding primary elections. Early voting for the March 3rd primary begins February 18th. The ballot includes federal, state and county races. Here in Bear County, the sheriff is up for re-election with challengers, along with multiple county commissioners and constables. We have a full explainer of the Texas primary right now on our website. There's also a link where you can check out your voter registration status. The last debate for the Democratic candidates for president before that voting begins is set for tomorrow. We'll take a closer look at what's expected in Iowa coming up in just a bit. Increased security following a shooting at a Dallas high school basketball game over the weekend. A man found dead in a truck at a local construction site today and a park ranger finds a kidnapped baby out in the cold. Here's tonight's nine at nine. A man was shot and killed by law enforcement on the southeast side after police say he refused to be taken into custody on an active felony warrant. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says a member of a federal task force and an SAPD officer were forced to open fire on that man after he became aggressive and used a stolen car to ram into occupied police vehicles. The superintendent of Dallas ISD says more security is expected after shots were fired at a high school basketball game Saturday night. A former student and a police officer were hurt when a fist fight ended in that shooting. We saw cheerleaders scrambling. We saw parents scrambling. 
There were about 650 people in the arena when it happened. This was an incident that has spilled over from the community, but we cannot uh, absolve our responsibility because it happened on our watch, on our property. The two victims are now recovering. The police officer was grazed by a bullet, but the 18-year-old former student has significant injuries and is still in the hospital. A man was shot in the head at a northeast side construction site. San Antonio police say the victim's co-worker found him inside of his parked truck at that site on Eisenhower near mid -Crown. This construction site is right next door to pre-K for SA, but police say at no point were any of those children in danger and they didn't have to put the school on lockdown. No arrests have been made. Police are hoping to get more information using surveillance footage from some nearby businesses. Police in Houston say a 16-month-old is doing okay after a car was stolen from a gas station with the child in the back seat. Deputies say Kimberly Cook and her boyfriend, Anthony Blue, went into a convenience store, leaving their child asleep in a running, unlocked car in the parking lot. When they came back out, the car and the baby inside were gone. 20 miles away, a park ranger spotted the child. It's pretty chilly out here, and there's a lot of wild animals running around here, so... Things could have ended up uh, differently had a uh, park ranger not come by here and located the baby. Deputies later found that car and arrested two suspects for kidnapping and auto theft. The child's parents have been charged with child endangerment. The man who stopped the gunman in last month's deadly church shooting was honored by Governor Greg Abbott today. On December 29th, it took Jack Wilson just seconds to pull out his own gun and fire the shot that took down the gunman who had killed two church members near Fort Worth. In a ceremony at the governor's mansion, Abbott presented Wilson with the Medal of Courage, the highest award given to civilians. Jack, I know that you have been reluctant to accept the label of being called a hero, but that is exactly who you are. You are a hero to everybody in the church that day. You are a hero to the people of Texas. Confessed school shooter Nicholas Cruz was in court today on assault charges. Cruz is accused of attacking a corrections deputy after he asked Cruz not to drag his sandals on the ground. According to an incident report, Cruz gave him the finger before he hit the deputy in the face and tried to take his stun gun. In February 2018, Cruz allegedly shot and killed 17 people and injured 17 others at Marjory Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Eight people were stabbed in Colorado Springs early this morning. Authorities there say the suspect was detained after some of his victims were able to overpower him and hold him until police got there. All the victims survived and were taken to hospitals. Police believe the suspect was working alone. Everywhere he was going, he was trying to come in contact with uh, people and he was injuring them. Uh, I'd really like to thank all the public for assisting us and helping catching him, along with medical and FD. Uh, their quick response uh, really helped uh, these victims and, and also helped the police try to locate the suspect. A string of suspicious explosions at ATMs in Tampa, Florida. Investigators now stumped. The blast began in November and several have been hit since. An explosion on December 22nd helped authorities gather some information on a possible suspect. A man spray painted the lens of a security camera before that ATM exploded. A water main break flooded New York City streets during the chaotic Monday morning rush, causing road closures, delays, and even some damage. Water poured into an underground garage, reaching over the tops of cars, and the area around the Lincoln Center was nearly impassable. We searched all the surrounding buildings and the subway, which came negative and shut down power to the elevators. And right now we have three buildings with significant flooding in the basement. The break also shut down subway service. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. It was a mess of a Monday. Oh my God. Out there from <laughs> start to finish. So Katie's here to tell us if there's any cleanup headed this way. It's just, I mean, it's still foggy out there tonight and yeah. I don't see things changing a lot until mid to late morning tomorrow. So oh. Get ready to factor in a little bit of extra time to your Tuesday morning commute. I want to show you today's time lapse. This is starting at 8 o'clock this morning. We had a dense fog advisory in place. Some of that fog did lift just a little bit. We saw our cloud heights 
also lift a little bit, but this evening those cloud heights lowered back down, bringing those really low clouds back over the city. That helped to increase the mist and drizzle out there and fog has developed quickly tonight as well. Low temperature this morning 52 only up to 61 because of that cloud cover that does not give temperatures a whole lot of room to move up and down. And today, while it felt like a very rainy, soggy day at times, we only picked up five one hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport. So all that light rain around today around today just did not add up to much at all. And I think we'll see a similar scenario over the next couple of days. Satellite and radar continues to show a lot of cloud cover, but rain Radar wise, not a whole lot is showing up, uh, but our camera uh, live cam out there is still have still has, you know, condensation on it. So there's still some really light drizzle. It's just so light that it's not able to be detected by radar. I want to give you a look at current visibility. This is kind of a different what we call a color contour than what we typically show you when it comes to fog, but uh, where you're seeing the the reds there, that's where visibility is lowest. All the way over from Seguin up to Bernie Stage, the airport in San Antonio, over to Castroville. Visibility is at zero miles in some cases. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, zero miles there, three miles at Stinson, but basically everywhere. Uh, we're looking at very, very low visibility already settling in. Dense fog advisory is already in effect and will be until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for San Antonio Bear County. Pretty much everyone with the exception of a few of our southernmost counties and I think you guys could be added in within the next few hours. So here are a few pro tips when it comes to fog. Some of these are very basic, but it's always good to offer reminders. You've got to turn on your headlights when you drive in the rain. Yes, but especially in the fog and make sure you use your low beam headlights. You don't have to turn on your high beams in fog. High beams actually make it harder to see when visibility is low. So use those low beams and just go ahead. Like I said, factor in some extra time to your morning commute tomorrow because uh, traffic delays are very likely as we get into Tuesday morning. A lot of people uh, will be tapping those brakes, so give yourself some extra time to head out the door as we get into early on Tuesday. That fog should start to clear up by mid to late morning. So I think we'll be overcast as we get into to the middle of the day, a 20% chance for some light passing rain. Afternoon, we should get be able to see a few more peaks of sun tomorrow, and that will help us warm up into the low 70s. And next couple of days, just not a whole lot of change. I do think we have a better chance at rain as we get into Thursday. You see rain chances jump up to 40% there, but things won't really change up a whole lot until we get to the weekend. That's when our next front arrives early Saturday. That will help to clear things out, but even looking ahead to the holiday next Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Looks like highs in the 50s Ooh. with more clouds rolling back in and rain chances returning. So we'll keep a close eye on that forecast. What a different week. I know. <laughs> Bye, son. Total yeah. 180. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. Monday night means it's time for an all new adulting hack. This is the series where we consult the experts on things we all need to know about, but might need a little bit of help with. Tonight we're talking meat from how to pick it out at the grocery store or the butcher shop to how you should transport it. RJ Marquez spoke with the folks at Bolner's Meat Market to share some tips. What's up, guys? Time for another Adulting Hacks on KSAT News at 9. I'm RJ, and with me is Joe Doria. He is the market manager at Bolner's Meat Company, of course, a San Antonio institution. And today we're going to talk to Joe about keeping your meat safe. Know when you're going to use it. Are you traveling with the meat? If that's what you're gonna do, vacuum seal is a machine that sucks the air out and gives you a good tight seal. This is freezer ready. Put it in the ice chest, make sure you have plenty of ice. Always remember to drain your water, guys. Water is not meat's friend. Meat freezes at 28 degrees, all right? So you wanna maintain 28 to 32, 35 degrees. A lot of guys put stuff in their trunk. We don't like that because it gets hot in your trunk. Butcher paper. This has no value other than covering your meat to get it home for the daily use, oh, okay? Freezer paper. So this is six month freezer paper, and if you wrap your steak correctly, it's good for about two days in the refrigerator, then you gotta go to the freezer. Anything else as far as when it comes to safety that you would advise okay. against? Change in temperature is never your friend, okay? And cross contamination is a big no-no. Make sure you clean out your ice chest after the fishing trip, guys. Mm -hmm. Wash them down, sanitize them. You wanna make sure you keep good cold ice, good clean ice. You wanna make sure that you have no drippage. $2 bag of ice saves a bunch of meat. What about uh, poultry? Keep it cold, keep it clean, and keep it away from the red meat. Joe Doria, thank you very much for being with us on KSAT News at 9, Adulting Hacks. 
Adulting Hacks, just one of the series that we feature here on the News at 9. Here's a lineup of some of the others that we have. Tune in tomorrow night for some tips on how to protect your money. It's in our consumer series called Money, It's Personal. You're watching KSAT News at 9 tonight. We'll be back in just one minute. In the race for 2020, now the final debate before voting begins happens tomorrow in Iowa. Stakes couldn't be higher. Now two candidates topping the polls there who normally agree on a lot of things. They're publicly feuding. A recent Des Moines Register poll has Bernie Sanders leading in Iowa for the first time. Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden are all close, close behind. But Buttigieg dropped nine points from the previous poll. Warren is now responding to reports that Sanders volunteers are trying to persuade voters that she's a candidate of the elite. I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. We have hundreds of employees. Elizabeth Warren has hundreds of employees and people sometimes say things that they shouldn't. You have heard me give many speeches. Have I ever said one negative word about Elizabeth Warren? The Iowa caucuses will be held on February 3rd. Here's a look at some of today's top stories. Cory Booker has dropped out of the race for president. In an email to his supporters, the senator from New Jersey wrote that he doesn't have the money to build a campaign that can win. He also says fundraising would be harder since he didn't qualify for the Democratic debate planned for Tuesday in Iowa. On top of that, Booker would have also been pulled away from the campaign trail because of the looming Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. Booker told supporters that he will campaign for the eventual Democratic nominee for president and Democratic senators. The Supreme Court will not be taking up Michelle Carter's appeal. Carter is serving a 15-month sentence for her role in her boyfriend's suicide. She was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in the 2017 death of Conrad Roy. Carter messaged Roy during the time that he was contemplating and attempting suicide. When he had doubts, she encouraged him to go through with it. Carter's argument to the Supreme Court was that her conviction was based solely on those words and was therefore a violation of her First Amendment rights. With the high court refusing to hear that case, her conviction will remain in place. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, whose net worth is more than $100 billion, has made a donation to help with the fire recovery in Australia. But apparently it's not enough for some people. Bezos has pledged $690,000 to the Australian wildlife recovery. The Internet was quick to criticize that, though, with some saying that he should be donating more. According to an estimate by Business Insider, Bezos makes that amount of money in less than five minutes. And Amazon has a market cap of $936 billion. Wildfires have devastated Australia since late July, killing at least 28 people and burning more than 2,000 homes. Amazon said that it would channel the money to relief agencies helping victims and restoring wildlife. The Academy Awards are less than a month away, and this morning we finally found out the nominees. The prospective winners, a mix of first-timers and old-timers, but once again, less diversity than the Academy would hope for. Ramita Puga breaks down the surprises that's making waves today. <laughs> the Joker took the most nominations with 11, including time. one for Best Picture. It's a bit of a surprise. Remember, this is the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. And so not only is it a popular success, it's done very well with the Academy as well. It'll compete for the top prize with Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. This year, nine films are nominated in Best Picture. None of them is about the African-American experience. So that's the bigger issue. And diversity lacking across all the major categories. Little Women producer Amy Pascal saying it's the third movie ever to be nominated for Best Picture that's written, directed, and produced exclusively by women. I'm working on a novel. However, Greta Gerwig snub for Best Director sparking a statement from Time's Up COO saying this is why Time's Up exists. You got a good friend here. 
In the Best Director category, Martin Scorsese receiving his ninth nod for The Irishman, along with Todd Phillips for The Joker, Sam Mendes for 1917, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Bong Joon-ho for Parasite. What I love about Nicole. For leading men, Adam Driver nominated two years in a row, this year for his role in Marriage Story. Also getting the Best Actor nod, Joaquin Phoenix, Leonardo DiCaprio, Antonio Banderas, and Jonathan Price. Mama, please don't go to sleep now. No, no, no. In the Best Actress category, Renee Zellweger coming off her Golden Globe win for Judy, along with Cynthia Erivo, Sir Ronan, Charlize Theron, and Scarlett Johansson. The show is going hostless again this year, a decision that raised viewership last year. The big winners announced here on ABC on Sunday, February 9th. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. New week, new set of trending stories. Let's find out what is trending on KSAT.com with RJ Marquez. Ah, uh, yes, Myra. Let's go ahead and start with the 2020 Oscar nominations. Yes, a big lot news of talk. today. A lot of talk about these. Um, and the article that I want to bring up, we have a ton of content on our website, is the snubs of 2020. Oh. What the heck happened here? How did J-Lo not get a nomination? Okay, Can you explain this, this to this me? This is for, what is it? Hustle? <laughs> what is the name of this? Hustlers. <laughs> yes, Hustlers. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Jennifer Lopez got snubbed. Uh, she apparently kind of, I guess, felt it because she had said yesterday at some point she was not going to be up early to hear these nominations. So she kind of knew it was going to okay. happen. Uh, Richard Jules, uh, Kathy Bates got in instead of Jennifer Lopez. So that was a pretty big one okay. there. Okay, yeah, I did see um, that. Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is snubbed from the best animated I picture. I have seen oh, Frozen my. 2. I, I know, I'm like the worst person to talk about Oscar nominations with because I haven't yes. seen half of them. Yeah, uh, same here. I've seen maybe like two of these movies. I haven't even seen The Joker, which got all the nominations. I haven't either, but oh, I God. have <laughs> a plan to watch it. Sometime okay. between yes. now and 2021. Uh -huh. Yeah. I will see that Yes. <laughs> Preferably before the Oscars or yeah. maybe not. Yeah, I don't we'll know. Um, I get there. Yeah, so uh, we have a full list of stuff, uh, snubs and surprises. Again, some of these movies I have not even heard of, uh, but they were good enough to get Oscar nominations, so uh, check that out. Switching gears a little bit here, uh, this was an interesting story that was making the rounds. Uh, a couple got married in the Philippines while a volcano erupted behind them. Cool so, picture, made for a really amazing cool picture. Amazing pictures. Uh, what is this couple thinking? I have no idea. <laughs> but they um, knew that they weren't in immediate danger? Yeah, well, okay, so apparently the island or the area that had been under evacuation orders. Oh. Yeah, and they still managed to go on with this, this wedding ceremony. This wedding not included, no. apparently. <laughs> no, okay. definitely not. Uh, these must be like the greatest guests of all time that had stuck around and showed up for this wedding. No kidding. Like you said, just awesome photos. I mean, unbelievable And we stuff. see this from time to time mm -hmm. now, right? We've seen like here in the U.S. when there's mm -hmm. been wildfires in yes. the backgrounds mm -hmm. or big storms in the mm -hmm. backgrounds of, of yeah. wedding pictures. So it's become a thing. Yes, definitely. So um, everyone made it out safe. So that was good. Uh, behind this plume of smoke right behind them. Uh, okay. Again, made for some great photography, but uh, pretty, pretty wild idea. Yeah. And we're sticking with this whole marriage uh, proposal type theme here. This is a, uh, this is an interesting story. This man right here has set the bar for all other future proposals. Yeah, he really has. Yeah. I think he's told everyone else just to go home. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen this? I have. Seen? Okay. I've seen this a couple of times. Yeah. This has been everywhere right. on the internet. Uh, so this gentleman sort of remade the end of Sleeping Beauty. He oh. came up with a fake screening, uh, a fake everything, to get his uh, now fiance to the theater. And he is an illustrator, so he sort of redrew the entire ending of Sleeping Beauty. It is actually really cool uh. to see this. And again, he's putting all men to shame, including myself. <laughs> and I thought I did a pretty good job <laughs> with my proposal. Um, but yeah, this was pretty impressive stuff. And to add to it, he even has like his own little cartoon character flip the ring at That's him. what I love, yeah. is that the cartoon characters <laughs> on the screen acknowledge him right. in the audience. Yeah. 
doing yeah. the proposal. Yeah, if you have not seen this video, it is really cool. And apparently uh, his uh, fiance's family was all there in the theater yeah, as well. Yeah, that was cool back. when yeah. she looks around and realizes, oh, I know these people. Yeah, yeah, so uh, pretty cool stuff. And again, uh, what is this guy doing to all other men out there? This is Just like you said, <laughs> setting the bar. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, okay, so if you want to check out this story, go to our website, uh, kset.com. All right, thanks, yeah. Arjun. All right, thank you, Barb. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching KSAT News at 9 tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good night.